so from today uh, we are starting uh, a new series uh, Sabitri musings on Sabitri and will be along with other discussions which we'll have we'll be continuing with this also so today as you see uh, the caption is a beautiful one our life is a paradox with God for key this is a one-liner but in its uh, bosom it holds so many truths and to understand all these truths to connect all these in our lives <coughs> we'll have to go a little back we'll start with the whole passage itself of course these uh, these uh, uh, sessions on Savitri will not be uh, very longer ones now let us go to the first line of this passage the master of existence this is from secret knowledge let me tell you book one canto four the secret knowledge the master of existence lurks in us and plays at hide and seek with his own force in nature's instrument loiters secret god you see all these things are so so very con uh, connected with each other when he says when sri aurobindo says that our life is a paradox with god for key he means that we in our life always are faced with paradoxes to which we do not have any clue there are so many contrary so many contradictions so many dualities in our lives and we try to solve these but are always perplexed and it is seemingly so that we do not reach anywhere truly speaking and along with it he says it is only in god is found the key to all these contrarieties these dualities these contradictions these riddles of life that is why will i i said that will let us go back a little bit we'll know why it is so the master of existence lurks in us and plays at hide and seek with his own force in nature's instrument loiters secret god who is the master of existence existence as it is we know now that there is only one single existence and that is of the divine the supreme divinity or the supreme spirit so the master of existence lurks in us means he is very much within us in each one of us in the depth of our heart that is the psychic being the indweller <clears throat> and plays at hide and seek with his own force in nature's instrument loiters secret god why does he say so and plays at hide and seek with his own force because the supreme divine or the spirit in essence it is one he is one but he has two aspects one is purusha and the other is prakriti so when he is purusha in the transcendental state he doesn't become himself but when he becomes in the becoming that is when he projects himself outside then slowly he becomes multiple and 
this whole process then is taken up by the prakriti which is none other than the other aspect of the divine only now it is well understood i believe so and plays at hide and seek with his own force because although he is divine purusha in his transcendental state he consents to manifest through the prakriti in different multiple worlds like this uh, earth or uh, earth only there are so many worlds as we know so he manifests in all these worlds and all these worlds are what the nature and or what we call the prakriti the feminine aspect of the same divine the immanent lives in man as in his house he has made the universe his pastimes field a vast gymnasium of his works of might the immanent that is the divine is lives in man as i said as that spark that divine spark which finally becomes when it comes to the front it becomes the psychic being and before that it remains as a portion which we call the soul and when it evolves farther and farther then slowly and gradually it becomes the psychic as we discussed earlier also and in this process he says a vast gymnasium of his works of might he has all the he is almighty so he has got all the might in him and he works through as if the whole all the worlds which he manifests through prakriti is a gymnasium where he works out what does one do in the gym people go for exercising lot of things lot of processes are involved in this to build up muscle to make one's feet but the divine also being almighty he spars with himself through prakriti in whatever he has manifested through prakriti in different worlds so it is also a gymnasium for him all knowing he accepts our dark and state divine wears shapes of animal or man eternal he ascends to fate and time immortal dallies with mortality <clears throat> the divine as he is omniscient meaning all knowing he knows everything all the states of existence including ours that of the humanity he knows everything and he also knows in it that we are in a darkened state because it is in the lower prakriti lower nature but even though because he knows he wears shapes of animal or man although he is divine having the supreme omniscience supreme omnipotence and he is supreme omnipresent also everywhere he is present still he wears shapes of animal or man because it is the it is his own state which he manifests that is why sri aurobindo says that divine wears shapes of animal or man he projects himself as we discussed earlier also that he projects himself or extends himself right from his uh, super conscious state to right up to the inconscient the neither most state of consciousness eternal he ascends to fate and time although he is eternal shashata that is neither he is born nor he is perished so he is eternal he always is 
he has no beginning he has no end he is always he is so eternal he ascends to fate and time although he is eternal he gives consent to come under fate and time and where it is applicable fate and time it is in the world through different purushas there are, there have been so many avatars as you know avatars then vibhutis and other divine aspects who embody themselves come down to earth to take up the whole of humanity to prepare them to ascend to the next level of conscious higher consciousness so he ascends in this process he ascends to fate and time also like you and me we all have to go through fate through time time as we know it is limited fate because of our karma different karmas in past lives present lives we also happen to fall in the karmic wheel which leads to fate which we call oh his fate is uh, very uh, ignoble i mean is very it is a very sad state of affair that he has gone through this but all these can happen because in the lower nature all are prone to all these things nobody can escape fate and time also the limitations of time and that is why one has to go through the process and through all these only he becomes a little bit wiser gains a little bit of knowledge rather uh, we can use wisdom he acquires a little bit of wisdom in the process and keeps on going forward from truth to truth he moves on and also sri aurobindo says immortal dallies with mortality though divine is immortal he makes himself come down for a specific purpose on earth and dallies with mortality takes the takes a body which is perishable on earth in time and space so although it is the divine who is all everything whatever exists in this world or in other worlds all are without exception the expression of the divine it is the divine so that is why he says immortal although divine is immortal there is with mortality in you and me in others in various worlds in various forms the old conscious ventured into ignorance the old blissful bow to be insensible although he is all conscious he knows everything he ventures into ignorance as if to taste how it is what it is and how finally from ignorance he becomes or he makes his manifestation which are we ascend to the truth and from ignorance to truth to light to knowledge the old blissful bore to be insensible when we see a small stone we do not uh, perceive it or we do not uh, see that there is life and we say it is matter jara dead matter so in it also the divine consents to be insensible it has no sense as if but 
in the depth of it, the divine is there. Incarnate in a world of strife and pain, he puts on joy and sorrow like a robe and drinks experience like a strengthening wine. So through all this process, through when one is in ignorance, he has to suffer. It is all known to us. And one cannot avoid also that state. But at the same time, it is perplexing and riddling that one who is in ignorance, he cannot remain in ignorance forever. He has to move forward. He has to come out of the ignorance and he sees the light also. And that is made possible by the divine only. So, <clears throat> the divine in essence is doing whatever is required for the whole world at first humanity to take the lead from going from ignorance to knowledge, to truth. And here he says, in a of war of strife and pain, he puts on joy and sorrow like a robe. What is the robe? We wear something. It is a robe, but we keep it aside also. We do not put a robe in ourselves. We do not wear something forever. For some time we keep the robe, then we discard it to get a new robe for us. Now he also, he says, he puts on joy, the divine puts on joy and sorrow like a robe. So first he takes sorrow, then afterwards, that is not the end of it. Someone cannot be in a state of sorrow always, and after sorrow, what comes? Joy. So all these dualities, everything is there. And through all this, he, he says, he, and drinks experience like a strengthening wine. All these experiences through which we go in our life, which at times becomes so very unbearable for us, these are like wine, you know. Wine, as one knows, that wine is something, uh, the more it gets older, the taste becomes uh, much more uh, sweeter, you know. So it is like wine, which going through all these bitter experiences of life becomes a strengthening wine in our life. All these sorrows, all these sad state of affairs through which we go, even from these, we sort of ferret out, bring out joy which is born from truth. And as we know, truth is something which remains always there. It is not something which is um, which comes for the time being only. Truth is eternal. But to catch a little bit of it even, it is very difficult. That's why we have to go through so many troubles, so many suffering, so that we do not remain engaged or entangled on the surface of our life, on the surface activities, surface uh, thoughts, surface emotions of our lives. And through this process only, we get a glimpse of the truth which doesn't go away because that is of the eternal only, the divine. He whose transcendence rules the pregnant vast, prescient now dwells in our subliminal depths, a luminous individual power alone. The almighty divine, he is the transcendent also. Be, um, transcendent because he surpasses all the manifested worlds. He rules the pregnant vast also, which we call the ether. And out of all this vast, he prescient now dwells in our subliminal depths. He is there everywhere. 
in the subliminal behind what is behind the surface he is there working always as a luminous individual power alone nobody knows about him but he keeps on working for his manifestation with the proper time for each one of us he paves the way the absolute the perfect the alone has called out of the silence his mute force where she lay in the featureless and formless hush guarding from time by her immobile sleep the ineffable puissance of his solitude you see whatever has been done whatever uh major things of high importance good or uh, what we call time tested all these uh, higher things they come from the silence only we do not need uh, a lot of time to understand these that all the even you take for example a poem a beautiful poem you cannot uh, make it come through your pen while you remain in a uh, rush or uh, in a state where you uh, always feel agitated it has to come from that realm of silence so gradually coming down let it come down and all the greatest stories of civilization if you um take a little bit time off uh, from your daily this thing you will find that all the civilizations the greatest of civilizations the greatest works of civilizations are done in that way only first the forerunners the pioneers they have to keep themselves aloof they have to as if um initially they try very much they struggle for the something higher to come down to take possession and in the process finally through their sheer aspiration of which probably they didn't know even it comes down and dawns on them and through them something great some great work is done or initiated all the the greatest civilizations on earth are examples of that so <clears throat> the absolute the perfect the alone has entered with his silence into space he has fashioned these countless persons of one self he lives in all who lived in his vast alone space is himself and time is only he the divine the absolute the perfect the alone all these uh, adjectives uh, belong to him only absolute perfect alone he is only the divine he is perfect uh, he is absolute he is alone and in him he holds everything in his bosom everything and only in time and space he manifests the absolute the perfect the immune one who is in us as our secret self our mask of imperfection has assumed he has made this tenement of flesh his own each line of savitri these are magical lines actually see so beautiful the absolute the perfect the immune one who is in us as our secret self he dwells in our in the depths of our heart as soul 
and wears a mask of imperfection he has assumed. Being divine even, he has assumed the mask of imperfection in us. He, the divine is in us, but he wears in us, the, in the outer self of us, the mask of imperfection because the outer nature is not the divine. He has made this tenement of flesh his own. All our being, this being, all the being, he takes up and works in us. In fact, he grows in us gradually. Because how does he grow? in us, that soul, that small portion, the ang, which is called the Angushta Matra in Sanskrit, the soul, in the course of evolution of consciousness, it grows and keeps on growing always through different experiences of life from life to life, gathers the essence, as we discussed earlier also, in stature, and finally, it flowers in flu full bloom with all its divine aspects. He has made this tenement of flesh his own. His image in the human major caste, that to his divine major we might rise. See. His image in the human major caste, that to his divine major we must rise. A few lines after this also we will find here. Let us read the whole thing itself together. Um, then in a figure of divinity, the maker shall recast us and impose a plan of Godhead on the mortal's mold, lifting our finite minds to his infinite, touching the moment with eternity. This transfiguration is arts due to heaven. A mutual date binds man to the supreme. His nature we must put on as he put ours. Same thing we found earlier also. That as the divine comes down in us, how? As that divine spark, as the soul, which grows and grows, he becomes in us. So like him also, as he puts his divine nature into us, we also, on our part, from the human nature, we will have to rise to the divine, from ignorance to light, truth and divinity because we are sons of God and must be even as He. We are not separate from divine. We are always, He is always there in us and He grows in us although outwardly we do not, it doesn't seem to be so. We do not know even that God is walking through us. In another place, um, in Savitri itself, we will see um, a beautiful line. Um, God, grows, God grows up while the wise men talk and sleep. People who consider themselves as very much intellectual, knows a lot of things about himself and the world, in essence, in truth, doesn't know that in him also God is growing up slowly. What a paradox, isn't it? That's why he says our life is a paradox with God for key. Until and unless we find God and we manifest God by acquiring his nature and for that to happen we'll have to let him work in our whole being until and unless that happens 
there is no chance for us to come out of this duality, this contradiction, this uh, perplexity. That is why he says our life is a paradox. It is a paradox of which we, are, we do not know anything. In the next moment what is going to happen to me, I do not know. And it depends a lot on us what we choose in every moment. Whether we wish to fall in that category, that brackets, that where one feels satisfied in life and wants to stay put where one is or to go forward rather give oneself to the divine to work him to make him work in us and help us to transcend from the lower nature to the higher. So that is why he says our life is a paradox with God for key. This is it is only the God, the divine, who has the who has got the key for that door when opens it is all splendor. There is no duality, there is no uh, paradox, there is no suffering. It's all light and love and oneness and the eternal ananda. Jaima. If someone wants to ask something, 